Hey guys, I'm back and I'm so excited to be back making YouTube videos. It's something I absolutely love doing. I unfortunately had to take about a month off because I had a lot of crazy stuff going on in my life that I just needed time to deal with. And I actually talk more about it if you're interested in a video on my other channel, which I will link to, and just about what I learned about slowing down when you're put in a very stressful or crazy or fast-paced situation. And for this video, I thought that I would just answer some of the questions that I got over the last month that I haven't been able to reply to. So the first question is from Iris and they say, have you tried using coconut oil on your hair? I just started doing the same thing pre-workout, but I never seem to really get it out, even with washing it twice in the shower. Maybe argan oil is easier to get out. So this was from my hair care video where I talk about how I like to use argan oil as a pre-treatment before I wash my hair. And I have tried using coconut oil. I found it was a little too thick for my hair and just didn't soak in. I think a similar problem to what you're having where it's just not soaking in right. I've heard that coconut oil is better for more coarse and thicker hair but if you have thinner hair or maybe not super dry hair it's probably better to use a lighter oil like argan oil there's a lot of different oils you can use though and i will link below to an article that talks more about which oils are good for which kinds of hair the next question is from tonal carrier and they say, a question I always have is, do you box up all of your clothes you're not using for the season? Then when you're ready for another season, do you go through everything? I've always wondered if people shop between seasons or how that works. So you do put out of season clothes in storage. For example, in the summertime, you would have your winter coats and sweaters and warm clothes in storage. There are a lot of things that can move between the seasons. I think some people think that Project 333, for example, means that you have 33 pieces for fall, a different 33 pieces for winter, a different 33 pieces for spring, and a different 33 pieces for summer. And it's not like that. There are a lot of pieces that will move between seasons. I have some pieces that I have in pretty much all of my capsule wardrobes, like my jeans. But I also think it depends on the climate you live in. For example, if you live in a place that has very distinct climates, you're going to have a lot more stuff in storage I do like to go through everything that I have in storage when I'm planning my capsule wardrobe, pull out what I need for the next capsule wardrobe, and also maybe get rid of stuff that I haven't worn in a while or that's been in storage for quite a while. In terms of shopping, I think it depends on how you like to plan your capsule wardrobe. I know some people like to give themselves a lot of time, so they plan their capsule wardrobe maybe a month or even I don't know, up to two months before. I generally would plan my capsule wardrobe maybe about a week before the next capsule wardrobe starts. I don't really schedule any sort of like shopping times or anything like that for my capsule wardrobes though. I kind of keep an ongoing wish list, I guess, of anything that I would like to have in my capsule wardrobes. Like if I'm continuously thinking about a certain item that I think would work really well in my capsules, I'll have that on a list and if I happen to find it online or maybe see it in a thrift store. So I don't shop a lot, but I will, I guess, every once in a while, um, look for any pieces that are on my wish list. And I will actually be creating a video this month about how I plan my spring capsule wardrobe because I have decided that there are a few things that I need replaced and some new stuff that I want added. So I'm gonna be starting planning my capsule wardrobe. Well, I've already basically started to plan my spring capsule wardrobe. So I'll do a video about that and about finding new pieces and kind of going through the planning process, I guess, a bit more. So definitely check that out. That should hopefully be up in a couple weeks. Next, hey there, Tanisha says, are you from Canada? I've been trying to search for Canadian-based, eco-friendly, ethical, sustainable clothing stores, or at least places that will ship to Canada, but so far, not much luck. Any suggestions? Definitely. There are so many great Canadian brands, and I'm not sure where you live in Canada. If you're from Vancouver, I highly recommend checking out Nicole Bridger. She's a really great, sustainable, Vancouver-based designer, does a lot of like jersey 
dresses, lots of really interesting draping, and has some beautiful pieces. Twig and Hottie and Dream are also two other boutiques in Vancouver that carry a variety of locally made and sustainable products. And there's also a Vancouver-based brand that I heard about recently called Wallace Evra, I believe. In Montreal, there is Atelier B and um i believe it's pronounced that i've heard of uh, i don't i've never been to either of them or haven't bought product for them but i've heard good things about them some toronto based brands are thieves encircled and meek and i will link all of these below i'm not totally sure if i'm pronouncing all of the names right Again, I haven't purchased anything from those brands, but have heard good things about them. And there's also some Canadian-based online stores. Not Just Pretty and Body Politic are two that I know of that you can order a variety of brands and different things. And of course, if you're in Canada, there's also a lot of American brands that will ship to Canada as well. So definitely look into those too. If I think of any other ones, I will add them to the links in the description. And if any of you guys know of any great Canadian sustainable and ethically made brands, please add those in the comments. It's always great to hear about them. So back on, I think it was my summer capsule wardrobe, Amber asks, how did you make the purple drape tee? And I wanted to quickly answer this because it's a super easy sewing project. It basically is a long rectangle of fabric, which is folded in half. And then you cut your neckline out of the top, out of the fold, a little bit shorter in the back, longer in the front. And so the rectangle comes out quite far and you sew up the sides, but you leave enough space for an armhole. And then you take the measurement of the armhole and cut another rectangle, just a small one, which you can also fold in half so you have a clean edge. And you just sew those rectangles onto the two holes. I hope that makes sense. I'll try to include some sort of little diagram of it. T-shirts like that, just big rectangle box shirts are super easy to make. Also, if anyone has a better tutorial or explanation about that, let me know. I'm really not that good at describing sewing and DIY projects. Okay, so next Yasna says, Hi, so one of the things I'm wondering about is how you go about washing clothes and having enough options to choose from because I usually wait until the washing machine is full before I wash all the clothes in one go and I'm not sure how this is going to really work for me. I guess it depends on what you're used to doing with your normal laundry. I didn't find that I was doing any more laundry but I did find that you have to, I guess, plan a little bit with your laundry. If you have like a few pieces in your closet that don't go with as many items, you don't necessarily want to be stuck with those kind of at the end where, you know, all your other clothes that go with the most of things are all dirty and then you have to try to maybe pair them up. So the more basics you have and the more neutral colors, I guess, that does make it a lot easier because everything is just going to go with everything else. I do laundry about once a week, sometimes even a little bit longer than that. And I've never really found a problem with it. We always pretty much have a full load of laundry. It's mine, my husband's clothes. I do wash quite a few things by hand though, and I do find that that helps with maybe the rotation of my capsule wardrobe a bit because some pieces, like my sweaters, I'll wear them quite often without washing them, and then when they need to be washed, I'll hand wash them and then they only take maybe a day or two to dry and then I can wear them again. So if there are certain pieces that you find you're wearing a lot, maybe just hand wash it in between your normal wash cycle so that you can wear it again. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's just about sort of finding what works for you. Maybe that involves having a few extra pieces. Maybe that involves doing your laundry a little bit differently. I hope that answers your question. I know that that's probably not a super helpful answer. Honestly though, my recommendation would be to just try a capsule wardrobe and see how it goes with laundry. And if you need to make adjustments, then you can make those adjustments, but you might find that there's no issue with laundry at all. So one of the most common questions I've been getting, especially in the last couple months, is are you vegan? And I'm not vegan. I eat a primarily plant-based diet, but I do not follow a strictly vegan lifestyle. So I eat vegan probably 95 maybe 99 percent of the time at this point but i also believe in supporting 
farmers and people that I think are farming in a way that aligns with my values. I prefer the term plant-based because I think that describes my diet, but um, I definitely don't follow a vegan lifestyle. Also, as some of you guys I'm sure know from my other videos, I wear things like wool and some other animal products, which I try to source as sustainably and ethically as I possibly can or buy secondhand. I've got other videos about that, which again, I can link to in the cards and down below. So I had a few people on my February My Five video ask where I got the reusable produce bags. And I just got them at my local organic supermarket. They were selling them there. I think you can find them at organic markets and you can also find them online. A lot of you guys commented different brands or websites or places where you found reusable produce bags, as well as where you found organic bags and things like that, which is great, which is even better than what I bought. So yeah, check out the comment section of that video. Again, I will link it. So next, The Whittingale says, I try to shop more eco-friendly and I'm always wondering if there's a difference between colors when it comes to being eco-friendly. I used to wear mostly black, but I think it takes a ton of color to dye something black. So I was thinking about switching to more eco-friendly colors like gray and denim blue. I don't like beige, but maybe I'm wrong about the color and it makes no difference. Do you have any information on that? So that's a really interesting question and it's very difficult to answer because there isn't a whole ton of information on what your clothes are dyed with. So, you know, you have your fiber content on the tag, but there's no information about the dyes. So in terms of more eco-friendly colors, the only thing that I could think of that would be the most eco-friendly would be an undyed cotton, but then those are gonna be the beiges and the whites. There are some color-grown cottons, which are beautiful, and they come in a range of usually like greens, some light greens, some light browns. They're pretty hard to find though. In terms of your normal dyes, I would say there probably isn't a big difference between the colors, color to color, but there are certain fibers that take dye a lot easier. Wool and silk are probably the best in terms of absorbing dyes. So in general, they need less harsh chemicals to dye those whereas cotton is kind of in the middle. And then on the other side are synthetics like polyester, which are incredibly difficult to dye. So I would say it depends more on the fabric than the color. But if you are looking for eco-friendly colors, you can look for natural dyes. They use flowers and berries and food products and all kinds of things. It really is an art form and I think it's stunning. Unfortunately though, it is pretty hard to find, but you can also learn how to do it yourself. And some natural dyeing is quite easy to do. You can take products that you find in your own kitchen and boil them up and throw your cotton clothing in it. Um, the dyes, the colors aren't gonna be as vibrant and bright as synthetic dyes, but it's fun and it's really interesting if you're looking for natural colors. The way I kind of see it is if you go with a more sustainable brand, hopefully they're using more sustainable dyes as well. Again, it's really hard to know that. You can ask the brand and try to get more information. And I think the color sort of ties into the longevity and use. So I think it's a lot better to buy a color that maybe is not as sustainable, but that you're gonna get a lot more wear and use out of than a color that you don't like, but that is more sustainable, like an undyed beige cotton. Definitely, if you like black, go with the black. Don't worry about the undyed cotton. It's a lot better to have clothing that you're gonna wear and use for a long time. So next, Kay says, do you have any recommendations for books on minimalism? Unfortunately, I don't really. I haven't read a lot of books on minimalism. I actually haven't even read The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up, which maybe is a really bad thing to admit to. I don't know. I mostly just read blogs when I was getting into minimalism, but I would love to read some more books on minimalism. Courtney Carver, we did a little live Q&A a few months back, I think. She shared some of her books that she enjoys on minimalism, so I definitely would like to check those out. And if you guys have any recommendations on books to read about minimalism, please let me know. You guys always have amazing recommendations, so definitely check out the comments, and thank you. if you guys recommend anything. And finally, Samantha asks, can you do a video on what you use Dr. Bronner's soap for? 
I currently don't use it for a whole lot of things. I know that there's some people use it for absolutely everything and that's really cool. I just kind of use it for a general, I guess, cleaning, um, showering, that kind of stuff. Um, household cleaning things sometimes. I use it to clean my makeup brushes. It's wonderful for that. Sometimes I use it for laundry, maybe a little bit, depending on the item. I think there's a lot of cool things to use it for and it'd be interesting to try to use it for different things, but I unfortunately don't really use it for anything particularly interesting. So yeah, I think I will wrap that up. It seems like it's been going on for maybe too long. I'm so excited to be back. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I'd love to hear thoughts and recommendations and suggestions in the comments. If you're not yet subscribed, it would be great if you could hit that subscribe button. And I will see you in the next one.